I had family, those same women, those same angry women, <laughs> you know, encouraging me to be in relationships that I was not happy in. And when I said I wasn't happy, it was like, a, oh, you'll learn like happiness doesn't matter. Welcome back. I'm super excited about this episode because I have an amazing guest coming on today. I love her. From the first time I met her, I was just like, oh my God. And I feel like this episode is really like going to be impactful to people that are looking to find their way, but not necessarily just finding their way, but knowing that there is a part to play in all this. And so this episode is called Self Exploration. And I have the wonderful Farron Moore, Farron Moore joining me. And I just want to like everybody to welcome her with one open arms, but I want to actually introduce her. So Farron is a wife, a mother of one. Her daughter is so beautiful, guys. Like she's just so gorgeous. And after more than a decade of contributing to her husband's success, Farron has stepped from behind the camera, she's in front of the camera now, y'all, she's doing it, she's doing it, to share her own personal stories of triumph with passion of creating a space for others where they can feel seen and safe to speak on personal experience that help them with development and becoming the best version of themselves. This is why I love this lady because her story is amazing and I think her journey is amazing. And so everybody put a warm, warm, warm round of applause for my dear friend, Farron Moore. <laughs> Come through with the vocals. <laughs> Come through with the vocals, yo. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for being a guest. Uh, I'm oh, glad I was you. making you laugh behind stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny. But welcome to Talking with Tiffany. And I really appreciate you coming and actually exploring this exploration with me. And I want you just to kind of tell the audience a little bit about yourself where we dive in and what you are, because I think you said your husband and people don't know who that is. Right. right. So for those who don't know, my husband is to hear more and he is like, it's in his core to be an entertainer. He's been <laughs> in front of the camera for a really, really, really long time. And he is the reason that I am now taking that, taking that step. So yes. Hey y'all. Thanks for I having me. It. I appreciate this so much. I'm excited. I'm excited too. I'm super excited. For people that don't know, and they probably don't know because I don't really broadcast my friends like that, I met Farron through a difficult time in our lives, mm -hmm. and um, and it was actually funny how we all met because you know her husband threw something out there and had me looking for something that made no sense, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so committed to being a good friend, I'm looking for it. Um, I was legit just thinking about that yesterday. <laughs> just thinking about that yesterday. I was like, how you just dove in. It was like, I'll help. I was like, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. But in that, it was like actually the next day that you guys actually really got introduced to me and my husband as we're walking out of a building. And then later on that evening, we end up go having like a couple's date and we actually stayed up to like three in the morning right. talking Yeah, and in a hotel lobby, just having amazing conversation. It's funny because Brandon and I were just talking about you guys two nights ago about he was, he was actually telling me of what type of couples that he actually likes hanging out with uh -huh. and one of the things he said about you guys, and I just have to share this because this is actually amazing, was because of my profession, I'm a clinical sexologist and a relationship coach, a lot of people will just dive in and take. 
and take, 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 take and stuff. And like, oh, okay, now we get to fix our problem for free because, you know, the, whatever. But yeah, the cool thing about these guys is that there was something happening. And I actually said, well, can I interject? And they allowed me to give some advice and they took it right then and there. <laughs> and most people don't do that. But I was telling my husband, I said, it's because of their self-awareness mm -hmm. about each other and oneself. And we have we we deal with a lot of couples that are not necessarily self-aware. They're self-aware about their problems, but yeah. not necessarily necessarily self-aware about self and, right. and what that takes. And so you yeah. guys really went into deep reflection in that moment. We're like, well, how can I? And I was like, oh, these are our people. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's that's like great because every time you know we kind of we have a, a disagreement or you know, just our visions are misaligned or whatever. I go to this point where it's like, well, I don't want to repeat this. So what's at the core of this? How can I contribute to not repeating this this problem again? And this is how you can contribute to not repeating <laughs> right. this problem. So yeah, I, I pride myself on being self-aware. We both do. Yeah, yeah, and I love that about you guys. <laughs> And I actually get to have your husband on my show next week with a bunch of fellas and we're having like this great conversation. So I'm super excited about that. Really um, nice. So yes, but our topic today is self exploration. And I remember bringing this topic to you and you're like, are you sure Tiff? And I'm like, Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. And, um, and because there's a lot of sides to me and it's, and when I say that just in my profession and, and my, my quench for knowledge right and my quench for people's experience and stuff and so i went ahead and just looked at the explanation and it said self-exploration is the process of traveling through an unfamiliar area to learn about it mm -hmm. and so when you think about self-exploration what does it necessarily mean to you like just for the definition like so you know basically your personality is is, is kind of defined by how you react to situations and i see self exploration is finding out why i respond to the given situations the way that i do so yeah and like learning those those triggering things whether it's good triggers or bad triggers like learning where that comes from like i just realized that i don't like asking for help or asking for things because of the way i grew up it was like yo you don't ask anybody for anything i'm setting you up so you don't need anything so if you go out this house and i find out that you asking for something i'm beating your butt and i literally like she proved that to me that was not just talk <laughs> so <laughs> it's like you want me to ask you for something no i'll get it myself <laughs> i, I think it. you're right yeah that's so crazy because like you said i did a uh another podcast and it was like talking about self-preaching what how you talk to yourself and it, and when we talked about in your earlier years, what you're taught in your earlier years. And so that, that, that's goes leads into my next question. And then I'll explain what I am talking about. So it says, what is your experience between yourself with self exploration in your life now as an adult versus in your early years? Mm -hmm. And I was going to say, just to add to that before you answer the question is, is that as children, we are taught totally different things than than what we actually apply yeah when we get older and mm -hmm. so like you're saying like even just asking for help it's like well why don't i do that like let's explore that this is unfamiliar yeah. territory to me because i've been told like okay stop don't go down that road so mm -hmm. i don't know anything about that and i think it's very important to explore yourself period Right. to get to know your likes and dislikes so what has been your experience as an adult with that versus as a kid so it, it took a, it felt, felt to me like a really long time to like gain some autonomy because as a child, especially the way I grew up, it was very female dominant and it was very much as a child, you, you know, you stay in a child's place, 
do as you're told, follow direction, follow direction, follow direction. So then when I was old enough to make decisions on my own, I was constantly looking for validation. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't want that. I want to, I mean, down to what I would wear, Tiffany. Mm. (laughs) And so it was like, yo, I am going to challenge myself to just make these decisions on my own. So like, I would not go household shopping or grocery shopping by myself. And it took, yes, it was that deep. So when I moved from home where I had my mom and my sister as a crutch to out here being, you know, co-lead for a household and having to do these things, it was like, yo, you have to let all that go and make these decisions for yourself. And that realization, it just, it snowballed into like, yeah, I, me owning who I am and being proud of it, um, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, it was, it was a hard shift because I remember like, I used to talk to my family, my mom and my sister every single day, multiple times a day, sometimes all day when I first got here. And now we speak maybe once a week, once every other week. Because it was like, I have to detach because I am running everything past them. And this is my life. Yeah. So (laughs) in realizing that was like, oh, my God, who put me in charge of me? But also I'm in charge of me. So (laughs) you it's so crazy you say that because the reason why I did this is because I'm like, oh, my God, I've done that. (laughs) Like not realizing that you and this is what we talked about in the other episode was, is that when you're with your parents, there's this sort of covering that you have and a sort Mm -hmm. of protection. And when Mm -hmm. you get with your spouse, that type of protection is different because now it has to be learned. It Mm -hmm. has to be like, what, what, what do you, what do you need me to cover? And what can you cover by yourself? And why do you need my, why do you need my opinion about what this looks like? Or or whatever, Mm -hmm. right? And not recognizing, I was taught that that's been embedded deep in me that the decision is not yours. And and so even when you said about the grocery store, I was like, I was the person (laughs) that did that. (laughs) Yo, so you're not alone. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, this is crazy. Like calling friends and being like, hey, should I get Prego or... Da, 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 right or what mm-hmm. like not being able to make a decision for myself and i have to say and i'm going to be fully transparent that didn't stop until a couple years ago for me because i was i would like i would second guess myself because yeah. exploration of self is scary mm-hmm. when you are when you have to go by it go through it by yourself when it, it's a by yourself thing right right mm-hmm. And when you grow up, you you grow up either in community or like you said, you're talking to your mom and your sister every day. And and those are your like your your travel buddies. Like you go to the bathroom, buddy. You don't go to the bathroom by yourself. Right. right. I would not even go to work without calling one of them. And I would talk to them all the way to work. And then I would get off work and I who it, either they would call me or I would call them and I would talk to them all the way home. Like it was just so ingrained to have their voice over everything I did. And I was like, yo, I'm tired of this. (laughs) Who am I? What do I like? What do I want? Like, let's, let me ask those questions and then answer them on my own. You're blowing my mind right now because I, I even recognizing that I wouldn't even make, I would then procrastinate. That's part of where my procrastination would come in because I needed validation to do something because mm-hmm. I did not want to make a mistake or didn't want to hear someone's mouth mm-hmm. about my decision that I made because I, I grew up constantly arguing with people about who I was mm-hmm. like, and because I was like, I was, I sought the truth. I was always like, well, that, that doesn't make no sense. That's silly, you know? And right. then people go off of their own logic or, you know, whatever culture's doing mm-hmm. and stuff and follow that. So as you're saying this, I'm like, Oh my God. But now with, I talk to my mom pretty often now, but our conversations are different. I, they're mm-hmm. not necessarily based on what I'm doing. It's actually me telling her like, yo, this is what I'm doing and this is why I'm doing it and support it. 
Yes. Yeah. And, and the, yeah, God, Jesus. Well, I have entered this space that of like, of discomfort with my career though. And so I did find that because Tahir was so like, he's in it, he's ingrained in it, that I reverted and I needed that same level of validation and hand holding that I used to need but now I needed it from him because it's like this is his like he's a subject matter expert now but he's like yo I don't know how to do that and I can't do that and so this is how I teach and it was like yo this I got I literally have to figure this out like you know in a, in a different way, I have to change the way I learned and change the way I moved. And so I'm actively still going through it just in a different way. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm and I, still think that's the, I think that's the purpose, though. I think we think mm -hmm. when you when we talk about these just specific words that it, at some point it ends and it yeah. doesn't. It's it's literally an ongoing process. Yeah. And In my first marriage. My husband didn't care about my ex husband didn't care about like what I did or like if I bought a piece of furniture he's like you it's your house you know da 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 and now my second marriage Brandon is so hands on I'm like okay bro <laughs> <laughs> but not even recognizing that you know things are different but then also there are things like you said like when you see somebody that's done it before and and like blaze a trail ahead of you 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 think that that's the person that i gotta follow like mm -hmm. oh my god let me let me ask this person about this and let me da da da, da. and they're like i don't know like you're on your own but <laughs> i don't know how to teach this <laughs> Absolutely. It, was also, it was like it was also like did not even feeling like he had the, the time, me feeling like he doesn't have the time to do this, but me not knowing how to do it. So yeah. it's like, oh, what do I do? Yeah. I really, I really need my hand held. I need like step by step, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they read the directions before you start type thing. Like I, I wanted a manual. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> <I'm happening. laughs> and as I'm sitting here thinking, I'm thinking, this is so funny. Dora the Explorer right mm -hmm. and when she would go on these ex explorations she always had like a something somebody with her mm -hmm. but now that i'm thinking about it it was somebody that she found during her exploration and so it wasn't like she brought somebody sometimes oh boy diego would go and stuff yeah. like that but normally when she's going by herself, she's on her own exploration and then she's finding things that actually are familiar with the surroundings and stuff. And I think that's one thing mm -hmm. that's been scary to me as I'm just been exploring is that who can I, like, am I gonna find, am I gonna get along with anybody? Am I gonna da 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 on this trail of me trying to figure out who yeah. Tiffany is and, mm -hmm. and what that looks like for me. So Following in my next question is how did you recognize that you it was time for you to go on this exploration? Like, and we just said that it's not a once in a lifetime thing, but no. how did you like recognize like, okay, no, I have to continue to keep doing this? So one thing, actually still going back to childhood a bit, I was like, it was it was put into me to like surprise yourself, challenge yourself, you know. And so, I mean, I even say that to my kid now, like, yo, surprise yourself. Don't do this for anybody else. Be proud of yourself. Do it to be proud of you. And so I just saw like how I want it to be. And in my, and working to become that person, because I came from, a, like I said, a very female led but they were angry women. I was raised by very angry women. And so it was very much, uh, you know, we women, we got to do what we got to do. Like, we don't have time to stop. Happiness is not even a concern because we are constantly doing what we have to do. And I did not want that. I saw it and I was like, I don't this this will not be me we breaking that right now with me 
And so it was that that was at the core of it because I realized it was so much anger. And I really realized it once I got when I left home and I had to learn how to make friends <laughs> and learn how to nurture friendships. And it was like, yo, I come off as this like really angry, aggressive person. And not only like internally that did not that was that was not who I was. That's just who I was, who I was conditioned mm. to show externally. So it was like, this is not who I am. I don't want to keep being this person. And now when I look around at the people closest to me and, you don't know, and hell, not, I mean, those that aren't even that close, I just have like a, a gentler, more loving group of people around me. And I'm like, this is a reflection of who I am now. And so it's been really dope seeing that. I hope I answered your question, but <laughs> oh, you did. You you most it, definitely did. It, it's yeah. It all started with like with me questioning what what I wanted, who who I wanted to be. Because I mean, I had family, those same women, those same angry women, <laughs> you know, encouraging me to be in relationships that I was not happy in. And when I said I wasn't happy, it was like, a, oh, you'll learn like happiness doesn't matter type attitude. And it was like. <sighs> Well, guess what? Until that's proven true, I'm going to keep striving for happiness. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so I was like, that I, that does not, I can't accept that. And I did. I, first of all, let's just take it back to you identifying that you were in an angry, like you were raising like angry soil. And that you were like, I have to transplant myself. And, and in my book, I talk about anger. Angry is a choice. That is, is a choice that you make, like to be mad about something, to be, mm -hmm. oh, I'm an, uh, you know? And so for you just to recognize that, like, uh, like the, you, you need to be like a, this needs to be a commercial because <laughs> for, because I'm just saying like, we don't even realize that it came from somewhere mm -hmm. and you're saying like and then you're and then if we back up and you're saying i talk to these people every single day and so like and i'm getting advice from these angry people that like and and, and i'm feeding into it because this is where this this is a comfortable space for me this is what yeah. i know like i won't travel outside of my surroundings because this is just who who I've raised to be and I think that says a lot and I think even when I met you just you like I said being so self-aware of your surroundings like looking around and saying wait a second and then when you just said now when I look at the people that are around me it's a reflection of who I am like who I truly am that says a lot because people don't even recognize that, like, like that whole saying, birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. That's some true stuff. Right. And I, I, I just, I see it more clearly now. Like it's easier for me to, to pick it out, you know, when it, when it's around. Cause I have, I, I have a friend now who's just one of those, like, she does it in a joking way, but she's just a very negative person. And I realized like, yo, I'm talking to her too often. And oh. it's, oh. <laughs> it's getting to me. And it's not even a point of, I don't feel like I need to cut her off, but I do need to limit how often or pay attention to what energy I'm in before I answer her call. I don't have to answer oh. it every time. Yeah. And if I'm in a in a bad space or I'm like, yo, I can't handle this right now i already know what's on the other side of that phone call so sometimes i just don't answer and i'll reply to her like yo i'll hit you later or you know or is it important <laughs> you know? if you are just calling to to dump on me i can't like i'm not answering that and so and i just i'm very protective of that now fair too. you're amazing Oh, you that are so funny. amazing. <laughs> like, I, I got goosebumps because I'm just like, your awareness 
of even just that. Like, and people don't recognize, and, and I'm and I say that because anger is something that's been killing our our race. Mm-hmm. It's it's been it's been because we don't recognize anger is somewhere, then it gets deposited somewhere in the body and it flows out through something. And that's mm-hmm. why you got so many of us like dying of heart disease and and certain things like that, because it finds right. a place to dwell in, whether mm-hmm. it comes out your mouth or it comes out of you physically. And you just being aware of, I can't, I cannot, I cannot flourish in that. I cannot live in that. That is not where I grow. That's not where I, and then you have yellow on. So you just like, you're like, oh, the sunshine is bright. Like, oh. <laughs> just, I'm just, as I, and, and I think this is one of the things that I, and this is ex- exploration is, is like traveling through unfamiliar, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And you're saying, I've been there before. So anger is familiar to me. And happiness is something that you say that other people say that doesn't exist. But you're like, I'm I, what you looking for. I got what you looking for. <laughs> hey, guys, I hope you're enjoying the show. Make sure you click the link below and pick up one of these This Is It You books. This book is some of the things that me and the ladies are talking about. It has a lot of helpful tools in this book. Don't get discouraged by the spine it's not a journal it's a book it just allows you to flip it back and do things like this so click the link below or tiffany.com t-i-f-f-y-n-e-e.com and pick this up sis is it you or sis is it you.com enjoy the rest of the show <laughs> no that's that's real talk we are our old our last place we had this huge whiteboard and for like a, it it may have been longer than a month, but I used to just write quotes on it. But the quote I feel like I left up there the longest was happiness is a choice. And that was just a reminder for me. And I have to say that I also just wanted to show up better for my family. Yes. Just really wanted like, yes, I wanted it for me. Because I just didn't like sitting in that that upset. But it was like, I wanted them to see me. Because actually, Tahir is like a very sweet person. And I, you know, was very quick to be like, why are you doing that? F them. Like, let's go. I was, I was very much that person. Very... And I mean, if I'm sleepy or hungry, I still am like no lie, but but I was very much that way. Like if I saw somebody I know falling over drunk out, it's like, yo, pull it together. But also you're not my responsibility. Mm -hmm. Now I physically cannot, like I cannot leave you without knowing that you are taken care of. And it started because so here is is very sweet. He will he's that that person that did that automatically anyway. And he sh- told me that I came off very mean like all the time and I was like I knew internally like I did not feel like a mean person and I was like I feel like I'm this bubbly like fun to be around person. And it's like no heifer you ain't. Yeah. So like oh let me turn the, you know, the magnifying glass on me. And, and it just, I just started to like peel, peel back the things, the insecurities. A lot of it came from insecurities. It's people I could not even stomach being around before that now I text them randomly just to check on them. Cause I have a new respect for them because it came from my own insecurities. My dislike for them came from me. It was a me problem. Yeah. And once I realized that, I'm like, hey, friend, <laughs> I was tripping at first. I'm good now. <laughs> You're like, is it, is it me? Is it, it was me. It was me. me. <laughs> it was, uh, that was, and this is why I picked this topic, because this book is about self-exploration. It's literally like finding, going inside the stuff that's unfamiliar no, to you, that you, that you don't believe in. Mm-hmm. And and understanding, hopefully you can't hear my dogs, my dogs are barking, but understanding that the, it, it it's somewhere in you. And when I realized I was toxic, I was like, oh, oh, I'm the problem. I'm the common 
common denominator in this. And and sometimes you'll look around and you're like, like you said, you've probably seen your sister, your mom, and you're like, well, they're more toxic than me, so it can't be me. I just I'm just a recipient of this. Right. <laughs> and you're like, no, I am a product. Product. Yes. Of this. I was just about to say I'm a product of this, but yeah, I can I can pinpoint where it started, but it doesn't have to continue that way. Yeah. And that's up to me. Like from henceforth, if I'm going to own my life, then who I am, how I display, how I present, it's all up to me. Yeah. And I can't blame that on anybody else. I can't keep blaming my mama for what she did. It's my choice to keep carrying it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yep. <Yeah. laughs> I had to, that was something I had to recognize even in my own marriage. I mm. um I had got I was raised by a mom that was power struck. And Explain. so so like she's the boss. So she carries everything, right? So if if you do something to her, oh, I'm gonna you up or I da, da 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 or this is it. It's my way or the highway. So I became very much like that where it became a manipulative behavior, where it was just like, I can manipulate a situation to still still follow me and make sure that I, I succeed or I look good. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was one situation where my husband went to Hawaii. I need my daughters to really be quiet. Uh, my husband went to Hawaii and he was doing some stupid-ish. And I, I cut off access to the bank accounts because I was like, all right, I'll show you what power looks like. And because I had that power and not even realizing how toxic that was. And then mm -hmm. also what it ended up doing to him mm -hmm. in the long run. And, and that like, that hindered our relationship for a long time because even after I had never did it again, any type of thing that came with, if I withheld a dollar, like I could be like, well, this is mine or whatever. It, that whole feeling would get brought up. Yeah, and I remember, the day, yeah. I remember the day I emailed him. I, I mean, I'd stopped the behavior, but I never had apologized for it. And so I wrote him a letter when I, when like I, God convicted my whole spirit. Cause he was just like, you, you are sh your mother. Mm -hmm. And I was like, like, just like you said, I don't have to carry this ish. This mm -hmm. is something that I've seen, but I can choose not to be the product of this anymore. I can create my own equation. Yep. And that's what I was. And I remember apologizing to him and I was weeping as I'm typing this because I'm like, Tiffany, you're such a trash ass person. Like, <laughs> like and I'm so sorry. And, and just even that feeling of control, like just wanting to be someone to be under my control. And I, and I end up finding out that that's witchcraft. And I never knew that, like, it's witchcraft is manipulating something into your favor for your benefit. Oh, okay. And yeah. I thought it was like some Harry Potter-ish, like, da, 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 right? right? <laughs> Expelling all like, this. Yeah, I, I was mind blown when it was like that. It's it's manipulation and mm -hmm. to and to make you succeed in something and not to allow like whatever whatever is supposed to happen to happen, right? Because you're supposed to learn out of that if it's not manipulated. Right. And I wasn't learning out of it because I was like, well, this is gonna work in my favor. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna screw with me and da 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 da, da and stuff. And I'm like, okay, I can't participate in that anymore. Um, mm -hmm. and that's not who I am. And I don't want and then I like you said, I then started to recognize and look around, and that's who I was surrounded by. People that also manipulated their ways and their lives to make it to make it livable for them even though they had chosen those bad things or whatever so it was like right. well, let me tell this boy he ain't he's he's my baby's dad but he's not let me let me tell this girl right. that i didn't do this but i did right mm -hmm. and it was just like all this stuff and i'm like i had become a product now now outside of my mother now a product of this foolishness that i was creating and i was like i that's not who i am and that's not who when like when you met me i didn't want i never wanted a person like you to meet me and to see she ain't it. <laughs> Next, this ain't where it's at. <laughs> but you know what? When when things really, really hit the fan for me, because yes, I was looking at all of that. I was attempting, not at even attempting, I was actively parenting different. 
I did not have any examples at all of a successful or healthy marriage in my life, like at all. And everybody I knew who was married, it was trash. <laughs> and everybody else wasn't, <laughs> but all, had all the advice in the world. So I was like, yo, I'm literally figuring this out as I go. And I want to be a benefit to this union, to this person. Like I want to be a benefit, but things really, really hit the fan when my, um, my anxiety just like spiraled out of control and I exploded on my husband and like ruined a vacation. Like I, I lost it. And once things calm down and, and then I am like queen of reflection. So I'm sitting there reflecting and feeling absolutely terrible. And like, he doesn't deserve this. Like this could have been a better conversation. Like now the conversation, the way it should have happened may never happen because mm. this is what you did. Like, and I was like, I can't repeat this. I cannot do this again like this, it, it has to stop. And so, and that was a few, a few years ago when it was like, I, I really have to get a handle on my insecurities and, and my, my, my mode of communication, because, mm -hmm. you know, I, though I'm a vocal person that I wasn't always approaching things properly. Right. And I wouldn't even think my approach through fully. And, or if I would think it through, it was a very like tunneled yeah. view. Mm. And it's like, I'm not looking at this from his side. I'm not asking about his side. I'm just like, this is what it looks like. This is what my mind say it is. This is what it is. F you. Like, <laughs> and I'm like None of this is right. Like you don't want to be treated this way. This is a conversation because nine times out of 10, I would sit with him or anybody and have a conversation on why they made a decision they made or why I made a decision I made. And we would be like, you know what? I understand how you got there. Yeah. Because of your experience, of course, that's what you did. Yeah. But because I'm only thinking from my own experience to me, of course, that's not what you should do. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So realizing the difference in that and giving space to like, I see why you thought the way you did. I see yeah. why you made the decision you did. This is why it was an issue for me because this is how I saw it. Let's talk about our that let's right. get to the, to the bottom of it and talk about that so we don't come here again <laughs> right I hate right. Mistakes. <laughs> right right and even in that like what and i want our audience to understand that you explored the unfamiliar you literally went to another side and said okay yeah. what does this look like where because i don't know that person and yeah. sometimes we don't even explore the unfamiliar in ourselves. Like you said, the insecurities that you, that you lie to yourself about that you don't have yes. and stuff. And then there are, or things that you try to suppress mm -hmm. and press down to say, okay, well, that doesn't matter anymore. And then it's like, ah, oh, we going to find a way to come up here, you know, <laughs> and yes. bother you and stuff. Yes. And I think that that's amazing because. And I, I, even when I met you, I remember you saying that, like, I, I'm just, I'm very big on self-reflection. And I saw that in, in our time together, like in the times that we were talking and stuff like that, which was, it was a long time. So I got to see like things and I'm like, wow, like how many people do you meet that instantly are like, wait, hold on a second. Let me ask some questions. Let me explore this for a moment and not just go on my own ride, but mm -hmm. because right now there's passengers. And so the passenger's experiences may be different than what I'm seeing because I can only see out of my two eyes mm -hmm. and they're, they're sitting around and looking at different things and stuff. So we all can go on a car ride and experience something completely different or be like, look over here. Did you see that? And you're like, oh, I missed it. Right. right. So now I have to ask you about it and what that looks like. And so mm -hmm. I think that's amazing, especially with us being married and, and us trying to have successful marriages 
And then also we we bonded on parenting and how we yeah. how we parent our girls, and 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 what that looks like because of how what we've grown up with and the exploration of us just finding ourselves and be like, all right, this ain't happening again. I'm not recreating this. I don't. Yeah. I didn't like how little Tiffany handled this. So I'm definitely. <laughs> Right. Oh my God. When I think of when I think back to like just some of the the ways I felt about people or even because I presented like I was a super confident person, but that's because I was me. Um, now <laughs> Wait, I, thought, I gotta I gotta say Ditto. Ditto. But I was like just overflowing with insecurity and now it's like when it comes when i mean i still i still have them of course i mean what human honestly like what human does it but i always like now i know how to stop and be like that's a you thing unless someone is deliberately doing something to to because that's their goal to make me feel that way or something you know Cause I mean, even with my Tahira and I have, you know, we we're poly. And so when I have an issue or I feel triggered, triggered or anything, I sit with it. And before I even go to him or I was like, Hey, that's triggering, still processing it. Can we put a pen in it? And, you know, he'll say yes, you know, whatever. But I realize that if anything comes up, it the conversation needs to start with me. Why is this trigger? What things is it causing you to question? Is that valid? You know, those types of of, of things. Because it's not always a, a him issue, you know, when it comes up. And now it's like it, it happens so, so easily now that it has to be something big for me to be like okay we gotta talk like (laughs) yeah yeah it's it's just all about me just how how did I get here with this frame of thought is this a narrative I made up yeah like now I can even stop myself because I used to yo my (laughs) anxiety and stuff and just insecurities used to get the best of me And I would just spiral with the whole story. Like I'm speaking for him and me on a conversation that ain't took place. And I was like, yo, and it, it, it like progressively got worse to the point where I was like, okay, I need to therapy. I need to talk to somebody. Yeah. I am taking this out on him and this poor man. (laughs) He don't don't deserve this. Right. (laughs) You just reminded me of a story. Um, Brandon had, before we moved down to Houston, we came to visit. Mm-hmm. And our thing is like, I think women, I think people are beautiful. So I think people are art. And so our thing used to be like, we like to, we, if we saw somebody with a big booty, we'd be like, oh, look at that big booty, right? Because I ain't got one. <laughs> so we're at Turkey Leg Hut and mm-hmm. and we're like pointing out big butts, right? Because, you know, now mm-hmm. it's like, is it fake? Is it real? Like, what, what's, right. what's, what's natural? <laughs> And so we're doing that. And then his brother hops in and was like, what are you guys doing? I was like, oh, we're looking at big butts. And he was like, oh, so he gets in. So then Brandon gets up to go to the bathroom and he's gone for a minute. And not anything unusual, just whatever. Insecurity mm-hmm. kicks in, right? Not even knowing it because insecurity is cunning. It's mm-hmm. it's very tricky. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it can hop up and you, you don't even know because you'll blame it on the other person. So yep. he comes back and I was like, what were you doing? He was like, feeling booties. And I looked at him and I was like, don't get killed. And he was like, his immediate response was not the answer I was expecting. Right. And so immediately I'm like, what did I do? What did I just have? What just happened, Tiffany? What, what did you mm-hmm. do? So we went back to my aunt's house and we chilled out or whatever. And the ne- and I, I talked to my friend and the next day I, I was getting ready in the bathroom and it was like, the Holy Spirit speaking to me saying like, Tiffany, you need to check yourself. Like, yeah. this is something that is wrong with you. So I went in the room and I was like, hey, I just want to let you know, like the booty thing yesterday, I said, I just want to apologize because that was not the way I was supposed to respond. Mm-hmm. I said, but what I recognize is, is that because I don't have one, 
and we don't really compliment me and my body, right? Because I'm mm -hmm. in the stage of losing weight and all this stuff and my body's changing. And I'm, to me, I'm 39, so I feel old. You know, I got orangutan boobies and, you know, all kinds of stuff, right? I got a mom bot, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so as I'm sitting there explaining this to him, I say to him, I say, because you don't, we don't really compliment myself, my insecurity jumped ahead of me saying, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, oh, now he's da, 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 you know, and even though I was participating in it and I said, so just tell me this. I said, if you're not the guy to like, you know, compliment me or whatever. And he was like, he's like, babe, if I dated Rihanna, she's not getting told every day that she's beautiful. You, you know, this, right. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, but if that's something that you need, let me know so I can give it to you. Right. And I was like, oh my God, like that's all that it took. But I had to identify mm -hmm. what the, the narrative that I was actually telling myself in that moment at the restaurant where a no. bunch of booties around, oh, don't get killed. You Like he wouldn't even do that to put us in a situation like that. But that's a story yep. that I had told myself based off of just all types of things, but, but really based off of me, based off of what I didn't feel like I was getting, but yet I never asked for it either. Right. Yep. Yep. That was a, another thing I I realized, like, you, it was times where I was upset over what I felt like I wasn't getting, but it was like, at what time did you ever make it known that you wanted that? It's like going to a restaurant and sitting there and expecting the waiter to know what the hell you want. You did ask for what you want. Speak up. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That it is like when you hear yourself say it, but it takes a maturity, a level of maturity to actually say, like, did you ask? And I ask my clients that, like, or even when men come to me like, she's not da-da-da, did you ask? Did you tell her that that's something that you need or vice versa, right? And yes. they're like, well, no, he should know. And I always tell people, no. we evolve every day as human beings. I said, I may wake up one morning and no longer like vanilla ice cream. I'm not announcing that to the world or this household. It's just a feeling that right. I have. And right. I said, so when my husband comes in and says, oh, I got you some vanilla ice cream, I can't be like, I don't even like vanilla. Who, how dare you bring me some vanilla? And he's like, At what point did you tell me that? Right. When did you tell me? Right. I wouldn't have got After you. Just let me waste money. <laughs> Last time I checked, you like vanilla ice cream. You better eat this vanilla ice cream. <laughs> right. Right. All of a sudden, you don't like something, right? And I think it's just right. giving people the space for that. So that leads yeah. me into my last question is, what are three to five things that you could tell our, share with our audience about how to create and exp and to become comfortable with self-exploration and stuff? Because that's something that you have, you have, you've done well. And even with just wanting self-reflection, self-awareness and stuff like that, what are some things that you're like, this is why I did this and this is what you should do and not what you should do, but this will be helpful for you. Right. I want to start that with, getting comfortable with being wrong and apologizing. <laughs> it took a really long time because I used to like <laughs> fake try not to be wrong so I wouldn't have to apologize. And it's like impossible. <laughs> Let's be realistic. Who can just never be wrong? Like, <laughs> Get out of my business, Farron. <laughs> <laughs> like let's who can so I realize especially because I I love my husband and so it would became like it, it has been from day one been very important for us to be successful it's like I'm not trying to jeopardize who I am as a person or jeopardize who you are as a person, but I want to be a good human to you and for you. I have to be okay apologizing. We can't say men always wrong. For a, for a woman, I'm wrong a lot. A lot. <laughs> it pains me to say, but I'm wrong a lot. And so I have to apologize. I have to acknowledge when I am wrong. There are things that I have jumped the gun to say. And I've been like, I should not have said that. 
and I wish I could take it back. And I know you can't unhear it, but can we please act like <laughs> it did right. not happen? Um, so that's what I have the fair. Give me one second. I have to pause. I forgot my daughter was at the door. One second. <laughs> okay. Sorry, she didn't know the door was open. So I'll just have to cut that part out. Go ahead. Second. Okay, you're right back. <laughs> so in addition to like just being okay, being wrong and apologizing, don't shy. <laughs> Lean into difficult conversations. Yes. Not, uh, it's been times where I'm like, this, this is going to be a cringy conversation. I may hear something I don't want to hear, but I need clarity on this. So I'm, I'm one of those people that's like head first. This is going to be difficult. I'm running into the wall head first. Let's just get it over with. Right. It's same attitude I take with, I mean, shoot going on a difficult hike, going to the gym, get it over with. Like a band-aid, snatch it off, go, get it over with. Let's let's hash it out and then breathe afterwards and, <laughs> right. and, and keep it moving. So leaning into those difficult conversations and seeing re reflection, reflecting a lot. Do not shy away. It has helped me a lot being reflective because it gives me a chance to like, were you, were you just saying your part? Yeah. Did you actually hear and receive and get clarity on the other side of that situation? And, you know, because I was one of the people like, I'm going to say my piece. I'm dropping the mic. I'm walking off. No, it's two sides to this. And once I, once I realized that and really took hold of that, it was like, you know what? I jumped the gun on thinking this, I am sorry. Now I see your side of the situation. Like it all just rolled, rolled together. The being okay with the apologizing, the, the reflection, like it just, those, those are the things that yeah. those, the different conversations, like all of that. And now, shoot, I, if I don't want to answer you, I'm not going to lie to you. I just won't tell you. And I will tell you to your face. I'm not answering you type thing, you know? So it's just, just being, being comfortable with who, who I am, my thoughts on the thing, being able to vote, to, to verbalize that in a clear way. Cause I can disagree without it turning into an argument. Right. Right. And so and shoot, that's probably another one. <laughs> Can you disagree without without it turning into a fight? You are you absolutely know? right. I was going to add to your thing. Yes. And just even accepting that you don't know everything. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're with somebody, they they will lean on you as you know everything because you might be the person that finds the answer. And there's been times where Brandon will ask me something. And he'll be like, well, what do you think such and such did? And I'll be like, blah, 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 blah. And then I'll be like, but you know what? I just made all that up and I don't know where it came from. So I, my suggestion is that you look that up and don't bank your answer on me. Like having the confidence right. to tell a person, like, I don't know everything and don't expect me to be right about everything. Even if my, my accuracy is great in that area. Right. I'm just don't put that pressure on me because I don't. And I think that's mm -hmm. that's an amazing thing to know. And you said some really great things in this conversation. And I'm so happy that like that is like you did like you there are moments where I'm like, oh, oh, are you are you talking about me? <laughs> are we are we about this? <laughs> Last question, 
question is, is when did you, well, you actually asked to answer that. The question usually is, is when did you know, when would, what was your biggest sis is it you moment? Sis, it's me. So one of the things that I do a lot is, I mean, it's probably, it's probably human. I'm sure it, it's human to just like see where it's other people in a situation like on the outside looking in you're able to pinpoint what's going on and so it was like yo you're on the outside of that what are you doing how (laughs) (laughs) what what are you know like literally looking comparing how i respond to situations like my sister and i are roughly about nine years apart And she became a mother. She had her first kid at a very early age. And she was raised by the same angry people I was raised by. And so she was an angry mom. And I'm like, yo, Mm. this was purely your decision to have this child. But she was an angry person. And so in seeing that, when I had my daughter, I was like, I won't be that person. And so at least not towards my, my child. And so I like really leaned into being a mom. And I feel like that was where it really started seeing that and being like, okay, I don't want to do that. Yeah. And, but also seeing like my mom, you know, she was hands-on and engaged, still, still angry, (laughs) but she was, she was hands-on and engaged in in loving as far as affection and and stuff but you know just she was just quick very quick tempered and seeing that and being like okay I don't want to carry that I know that I have that that I experienced that I don't want to carry that but it was really when I had my daughter that I started to look at me more Mm. and the more life happened And then walking into a a marriage with this man I just had to be with, it was, (laughs) it was like, yo, this, this needs to work. Like, this is my person. So further exploration into who am I, how am, you know, and how does he see me? And when he told me he saw me as that person, like, I literally cried because I'm like, that's not how I feel. (laughs) (laughs) And so it just. It was, you know, it was a slow churn, but it, those moments still stick out in my head as like those pivotal things that was like, okay, it's you, it's you. Like, these are the things that you need to be looking, looking at yourself. Yeah. That's <sighs> good. Yeah. And that's funny. Cause I think we, it was, it was my kid that was like, she said, she was like, I don't trust you. And she was like, and I was like, oh, and she was like, because when your mood changes, so does your word. Mm. And I was like, oh, it's me. It's me, Lord, it's me. (laughs) (laughs) So I totally get it. Thank you for joining me, everyone. I want you to make sure that you check out this episode. Farron, can you tell everybody how they can watch your podcast and things that you do and how they, if they want to reach you and get some information, how does that, what does that look like? Awesome. Podcast is on Apple pod, Spotify, the visual, because we record video as well is available on YouTube on to hear more's YouTube channel. And we're on IG, uh, more to the story podcast on, on Instagram and to reach us is more to the story podcast at gmail.com. And um, I'm not sure when this airs, but I have a new project coming out called secret menu. That's more about the lifestyle side of things. It's, it's a passion project of mine that I'm working with, with, uh, with a good friend of mine. So I'm very excited about it. And we'll make sure we put all that information in the show notes. And so thank you everyone for joining us and we appreciate you. Now just do a pose. Do a pose.
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you tune in to season two with Talking with Tiffany. This season we have a lot of impactful, powerful guests that are going to dive really deep into some of these words that we put self in front of. You know how I say every time you put the word self in front of a word, you minimize the word in front of it. But these people are actually doing these words wholeheartedly. So check out season two, press subscribe, like it, and share please. Enjoy your week. Thank you.